The year is 2019, almost two full decades into the 21st century, and we find ourselves at a very interesting point in our human history, as we stand upon the verge of an industrial revolution, a fourth industrial revolution. So as the world is set to face this unparalleled coming wave of digital disruption and evolving technologies, exactly how are we responding to it? And what are our general feelings and attitude towards it? Welcome to Harankua, a South African township located about 37 kilometers north of Pretoria, situated in Region 1 of the City of Tuana Municipality. In the community, we will be engaging in our documentary as we attempt to figure out just what the people's narrative is to the Fourth Industrial Revolution. So as part of our documentary, we're going to be approaching local residents of the community and interviewing them to find out just what their thoughts are on the fourth industrial revolution, to see how they're responding to it, how they feel about it and possibly what they think it will entail. In need of information in a talkative crowd, I first headed to the local library hoping to find people of interest to interview who would care to share their thoughts on the rise of digital technology and how it has come to shape our day-to-day -day lives. Okay, yes. Hi, Ashley, how are you today? I'm good, and how are you? I'm alright, thanks. Um, so I'm Linda Lani Nisi, right. and I'm here on behalf of Mizu Org, shooting a documentary about computer literacy and the fourth industrial revolution in South Africa. Okay, I'd like to thank you very much for being part of the interview today. Appreciate it. Okay, it's a pleasure. Okay, so um, starting with the interview, just gonna jump in. First, like to ask, uh, what do you do? Uh, for a living, I go to school and I'm studying third year, my final year in accounting management, mm. BSc. So I'm almost there to graduate in around September, October. September, October. Okay. Is uh, accounting a field that really excites you? Well, I wouldn't say exciting. It's a field of, you know, learning things every day. So, yeah, I would say hectic and challenging. Hectic and challenging. All right. All right. So, um, about our topic today, Fourth Industrial Revolution and such and such, I'd like to find out from the people in our community what they think about the Fourth Industrial Revolution and how they're adopting to it, these new technologies that are coming. So, have you ever heard of the fourth industrial revolution? Um, from you, it, uh, it, it's my first time of hearing about it, uh, fourth uh, industrial revolution. Well, it's, it's something that I'm also learning from my side to adapt to technology. Well, it was not easy, but at the same time, it's something that, you know, I'm getting used to all the time. So that's what the world is uh, trying to, all of us as South Africans, or as the world as a whole, for us to adapt to technology. Okay, okay. So what does this adapting to technology mean to you? Well, to me, I'm basically a person who loves gadgets because I deal with gadgets all the time. When I'm at school doing school stuff, um, or when I'm just at home, you know, just chilling and not doing anything, or when I want to do stuff on my phone. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's it's things that I'm used to doing. It's it's it, I wouldn't say as a hobby, but it's something that I can't just get used to. I just can't go a day without technology. Uh -huh. Well, we can't all the time live in olden days. We also have to adapt. Mm -hmm. You know, string like you just have to pull the strings so that you, you can, you know know new people every day develop into a new world so we can't all the time be in one position you know i'm a person who tours all the time you know we meet new people every day so that's how i get to you know learn stuff every day. actually talking about how technology plays into our lives every day how uh, how would you say our world would be different on a, on a day to day basis, whether it be socializing, business wise, or education, if we didn't have 
the internet and computers? Well, it would be difficult. Mm. It, it would be a very heavy world. Um, we people don't connect that easily. We just, you know, judgmental of what is this person going to say or what is this person going to say. So it, I would say it would be difficult. It wouldn't be easy. And um, it's not something that I would, you know, agree upon or talk <laughs> to somebody about, you know. Mm. But on my side of business, I, I, I just. I just can easier approach a person of saying this and saying this, but it's not easy to pass away or influence that person. Okay, as opposed to if you had a website they could go to mm, and just... A blog, exactly. Ah. Okay, okay. Um, so then, what do you usually use the internet for? I usually use the, uh, the internet to research about current wild that's happening in the world. Mm. And uh, the statistics. Um, okay, okay. So then, looking at your local community or surroundings, Harangu, South Africa, mm. what would you say about access to internet here? Would you say we have a lot of it? We have enough of it? Not too much? Not enough of it? Mm. Well, we people are different. We don't use. Um, internet the same. Mm. Well, um, to say to other people we use internet for social media platforms or entertainment and other stuff. We just love to research about you know, um, stuff that don't grow us. Mm. And that's a challenge because that's why they, uh, the foreigners would say um, South Africans don't use their resources. That's why we are here to use their resources so that that can be ours. So I wouldn't, uh, um, I would put it out of five, I would put it in uh, 3%. Mm. We're not using those resources. We're not, we're not active in what's happening around the world, what could affect us in the near future. So as a whole in South Africa, well, it's an open, it's just, down so quickly. Okay, okay. And then if you had to comment on the access to computers and digital technology in South Africa, what would you say about that? Well, it's it's pretty good mm. because we all we all have technologies. We all do real. But we don't use it uh, to to you know to help us we just use it for fun chase like we just use it for fun we just want to see what's happening with other people's lives instead of checking off what's happening around your own world what can happen to you in the near future so that's way important for other people to learn about what's happening to me what's going to happen in the next five years ten years because the years are moving way by we all need to learn anything doesn't because that's why they say the foreigners are taking over now. People are surprised of why are foreigners taking over. It's it's something that you know we just need it by being what you know. South Africa, the second largest economy on the African continent after Nigeria, yet also an economy far more familiar with foreign influence than local activity. 25 years into its independence and the country finds itself battling with high levels of unemployment, crime and illiteracy amongst a range of other challenges as it attempts to navigate its way to stability after years of apartheid which led to economic and social unbalance in the nation. Although boasting one of the most mineral rich countries in the world with massive gold, diamond, coal, iron ore and platinum deposits spread around the country. South Africa's natural resources mostly add value to the country as exported goods, raw and unprocessed, after which the country imports most of its processed and manufactured goods from foreign markets. Looking at the year 2018 for example, SA's top 5 exports included coal at 80 billion 225 million, as well as gold, platinum, diamonds, jewelry and precious metals at 71 billion 678 million while on the other hand its top five imports included crude oil at 144 billion 954 million and vehicle components 49 billion 770 million 
so it comes as no surprise that South Africans fear that their economy and their country is under threat of foreign dominance as the country manufactures very little of its own goods but depends on foreign markets for many of its manufactured and processed goods. This unfortunately makes South Africa quite vulnerable to any instability or disruptions in international trade, meaning that if a country were to raise the price of its exports or discontinue its trade with South Africa for any reason, then this would very likely have a negative influence on the South African economy. Well, interview so far has been amazing, by oh. the way. <laughs> uh, but I, I believe I'm, uh, we're now coming cl to a closing because I only have a few more questions I'd like to ask. I don't think I'm going to take up too much of the time. No problem. Okay, so for the couple of last questions, have you ever bought or sold anything online, service, or product? I have bought a few things online. Oh. And I got a lot of things mm. that I was not happy about. I got to report, I got to do this, I got to do this. Some of my stuff I got them late, mm. some of my stuff were just, you know, missing. So uh, I wouldn't say I'm impressed about buying things on, like, online. Okay. It's just not for me anymore. Well, if you don't mind my asking, were you buying from OLX or was it sort of uh, an established company like Pick and Pay. So was it was it another person or a company that you were buying from? Two it was another company that I was buying on. I wouldn't mention it online. Ah. Well, uh, it disappointed me way by. I got to fight with my father about it, and I still don't forget. Hmm. But in a way that you know, he got to pay it because he had the money, and hmm. I couldn't because he wouldn't trust me of paying it. So I, I, I was disappointed I got it after a month or so, mm. maybe I got it within two weeks from that specific company that I got it from. Okay. So it was just you know, online, not for me. Okay, okay, okay. Um, then have you ever taken a course online? Uh, no, I haven't. I just prefer to go straight there. Okay, to, to the school yeah, or to the institution? The, yeah. Okay. Then, have you ever been a victim of cybercrime in any way or form? Nope. Okay, okay, so you've been safe <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, then, finally, is there anything else you'd like to say, perhaps? Well, uh, what I'd like to say is that um, I hope this documentary is going to change someone's life or like it changed my life, <laughs> I don't know, someone's life can. We always change or in class I would say Ubuntu, Gabantu, something like that. So mm. it, it goes on and on and on. So how you watch it, it's up to you. If you take something from my side or notes, it's up to you, it's your life. Yeah, thank you guys. After a splendidly engaging interview with a young and hopeful tertiary student, I made my way further into the library hoping to gather more insight on the subject at hand from someone with a bit more wisdom and experience. Yes, good day, Paul. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm all right, thanks. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for being part of my interview today for the documentary. Uh, as I said, the, do the purpose of the documentary is to tell the story of how we in South Africa are adopting the fourth industrial revolution okay. and are getting used to changing technology. Okay. Okay. So for the sake of those who will be watching the documentary, okay. may I ask you, uh, what do you do? And Okay, well, we're at the library, the Kharankoa local library. So, so what do you do? Most the library assistant uh, assist uh, our clients or our users uh, to look for information, to, to take out books when they borrow books, to return the books, to uh, assist with their computer if they don't use the computer, uh, with the scanning, printing, those kind of, of, of things. Yeah. Like in the books, other people they come here searching for searching for information, they don't know how to find the information. Mm. I'm the one supposed to assist them with information, how to search for information, especially kids, uh, scholars. Uh, the one from, from primary and high schools, yeah. 
Okay. And then if I may ask, how long have you been working here at the library? Uh, since from 2009, I've been here in the library. 2009? That's correct. Okay, and I... You mean this one, uh, specifically this one? Specifically this one, yeah. Right, from 2009, yeah. Okay, well, I, I see that um, there is 20 free Wi-Fi here. This Wi-Fi program given by the government for free access to internet. That's correct. Um, has it been here since you started working here or...? No, no, no. I think it's that's not even two years now. Two to three years, if I, if I remember well. Okay, okay. So the, so the free Wi-Fi has only been here for two years? Let me see, I think it's two years. I think I remember it's two years. Okay. Ah, yes. The Tswana free Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. The city of Tswana's free Wi-Fi service providing free internet access across more than 780 Wi-Fi internet zones in Tswana, including open public spaces, educational institutions, schools, clinics, and libraries. Aimed at narrowing the digital divide and inequality amongst Tswana residents, whilst connecting, entertaining, educating, and empowering them. The initiative was first pioneered in 2013 by Project Isizwe, partnered with the city of Tuame before the city adopted full control of the initiative in late 2018, after it terminated its contract with the non-profit organization Project Isizwe. Originally boasting a daily limit of 250 megabytes, the Twi-Fi initiative continued to expand and grow over the years, increasing the daily limit to 500 megabytes and then more recently 1000 megabytes as it gained popularity, widespread use and a number of awards, helping the residents of the city of Tswane connect to the internet amidst high data costs in South Africa, which have made telecommunications in the country a matter of class divide, as low-income households struggle to keep up with the sky-high cost of data. Eventually sparking the hashtag data must fall movement, South Africans have long been at odds with the high cost of data in the country, voicing out their upsets and frustrations with the dominant mobile networks in the country. The plight of South Africans getting more affordable internet access eventually received the aid and attention of ICASA, the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, whose efforts have yet to have had any dramatic effects on data costs. And so it is that internet access in South Africa has become an economically constraining issue where government, non-profit organizations and other assistive parties have come in doing what they can to help increase access to the internet for educational, economical and social inclusion purposes. And then if you would say um, before the free Wi-Fi was here was there as much activity, were there as much people coming to the library, or did anything change? To be honest, you know, it's not like that. No, no, we've got so many, so many people come to the library. Some of them come just for the Wi-Fi, some of them come to study, some of them come to do their research. But before the Wi-Fi, there were not, there were not so much here. Yeah. But they only come, the only, most of the people they come during exam times. It's where you can find people coming to study. But not even, even those, not, it's not exam time, people they come to the library. Just for the wife, for the rest of you. Okay, okay. Uh, then the computers here at the library, have they always been here? Since, well, since you started working here? That's correct. Okay, so people have always come to the library to use the computers and... and, and yeah, yes, they do come to, to, to use the, the, our, our computers to do their own things there. Yeah. But like this is we have Wi-Fi now, others they come with their laptops, they use their laptops, yeah. But before, before the Wi-Fi, you find it so well too. So many people using our computers because for, it's for free, you don't pay anything. Yeah. Okay, okay. Right okay, and then, um, okay, so personally, have you heard of the fourth industrial revolution before? Yes, I have heard it on the radio, so you talk about it on the radio. Okay, and what do you think about the fourth industrial revolution? Or what does it mean to you? To be honest with you, I don't have um, much info about it, but what I know is that it's just. just you no, know, these days we are living in a technology that is the one doing almost almost everything. It's like let me, maybe I can say they they improve the technology to make it easier for us as, as people here. Yeah. That's what I know roughly about uh, just a little bit, just a little bit I know about the uh, photography. I don't know no much about it. Okay, and then how much would you say 
computers have changed the way we work? Or what would you say, how have they affected the way that you work here at the library? If you didn't have computers, what do you think it would be like here at the library? Yeah, in the past, uh, uh, there were no computers in the library. They were, they were doing everything so manually. But now since we, uh, we are using the computers, they make things easier for us. Like if you're looking for a book, it's easier for me to go to the, to the computer and just search for the book, the title, or uh, uh, the author of the books, so it's easier to search for a book. Or if you're looking for information, you don't have the information on, on the book, you just go to, it, you go to the computer, you find the computer, you just print and give you the paper. Like it makes it easier for us, yeah. Okay. To, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's made, so the, having computers here has made things a lot easier for... Easier. Yeah, for, for the service, to provide the service to, to, to our users, to, to our clients. Yeah. Okay, okay. <coughs> uh, then, what do you usually use the internet for? You mean? Personally, yeah. Uh, personally. Personally. No, I use it to, 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 mm -hmm. to search things. Like, let me, let me, let me, I've got something from work, I mean from work or from school, and I'm supposed to search that they just go to your computer. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe say sometimes if I want to update myself with the news that's happening around the world, around, around South Africa, I just go to the internet, I go to a news to info or Sweden, I read the news there. It's, it's, it's for so many things. If you want to do a, 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 any research you want to do, you just go to your computer or to the internet. Uh, it will help you. Okay. Okay. Fine. okay, and then on an average day, how much of the day do you spend using the internet? Uh, you're welcome to give the answer in percentages or just saying most, half, or... Yeah, since I said to you that uh, when people come to the lab and looking for something, I only go to, I, I, just, I refer them to the books. If I can't find information from the books, I go to the internet. You know? Sometimes I use the internet for, to assist our users or even for myself, which means most of, most of the time I use the internet in the lab. Most of the time, yeah. Let them say 70% of the day I use the internet, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. And then, have you ever bought or sold anything online, whether a service or a product? Nope. Is there a reason? Do you not trust online retail? Do you not like it? Do you prefer um, buying things in person or...? Yeah, no, online work is easier for us, but it, there are so many scams these days. Yeah. You can't trust. <laughs> I, I, I prefer going to the shop and communicate with the people and see what about the thing. Who am I speaking to who assisted me to buy the thing? So if, if I've got problem in the future, I know where to go. But on, on online, I, I don't trust it. Oh, okay, no, okay. I, I, I don't trust it, no, to be honest yeah. Okay, I guess there are some problems because there are people who can make fake websites or sell you fake things. Like, like, as if, just like that, yeah. Okay, um, then have you ever taken a course online? No, I didn't. Um, is there another, re is there also a reason, do you prefer your courses offline or are you, have you not found any course that's interested you really online? Or? Yeah, at the moment, uh, I haven't found anything that I can do, but you never know, maybe in the future I can find one, but for now, I haven't found any, any course that I can do online. Yeah. I, I don't know, I can only go to the class and attend, even though it's after work, yeah. but I don't, like, I don't remember if I find any course that is interesting to me. Yeah. Maybe they are there, but I'm not that way, you know, who knows, but you never know, maybe in the future I can take one. Okay, well, uh, are, you, are you interested in in taking up any courses of learning anything, like maybe in the future would you ever want to learn how to sew or how to make something or anything like that? Yeah, I don't want to work in the library, but I'm also in the uh, transport industry, as I've, I've, I've told you. Now I want to learn more about uh, transport, transportation. See, now if things goes like I want to, I'll take a course of, of transport management. So that so since since I'm also working all within transport during spare time or on, on weekends, yeah, I will take transport management in free time. Okay, okay. Um, then have you ever been a victim of cybercrime in any way or form? Like you yeah, have to know, <laughs> never. <laughs> and I don't wish to be. <laughs> I just changed that word, yeah, but it, but there's never ever happened to me. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Do you think there's anything that you do in specific? Like t being careful, or do you think that you're just lucky? If you had to say, no, I will say I'm lucky. But it can, it can, it can happen to anyone. No one knows. It can happen to anyone. For let me say I'm lucky that this way. Like, 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 like. I prefer going to a bank inside the bank, even though I don't really hate it to to queue. But I don't mind to to queue. Uh, but this thing of going internet sometimes is 
Mm. Uh, it makes it easier for other people to take your money out of your account. You see, but I don't touch it that much, to be honest with you. Okay, okay. Okay, well then, I believe that's most of the questions I have for you today. Uh, I'd like to ask you one last one in closing. Okay, so what do you think the future is going to look like? Or how do you think computers are going to affect our future when it comes to things like work, buying, and learning? Hey, when it comes to buying, right, it makes things easier for us. As you've, if you, you've been talking about the online shopping, it makes things easier for us. Just do everything online. You can deliver it. It's not safe, but sometimes it makes things easier for us. I don't come to work, that's my wife's come to work because our, our kids, our, our, our upcoming young ones, don't find work anymore. But the computer will be doing everything. Like now in the lab, right now, still people are still using books. But in the future, there will be no more books. People will just check the information on, on the computer, uh, the books on the computer. See? When it comes to the issue of work, most of you do not want to have work. Mm. But, but it, 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 it's, it both ways. If it is two sides of our way. It's good, it's also not good, yeah. To be honest, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you feel that computers are going to take away some jobs? Some jobs, yeah. But sometimes, some, some it also makes it easier for us. Okay, okay. Well, do you think that computers would also create some jobs? Like maybe as they take some jobs, there's going to be people who now have to fix the computers or something like that. Yeah, but not everyone can fix the computer. <laughs> not all, we can, we can all, all be doing IT, all of us. Others, we are. We are not good in the department. You see, yeah. We prefer working like here yeah, in the computer to what they what they prefer from here. But when it comes to fixing the computers, programming, all those things, uh, uh, we can all do it that thing. Okay? We can all do that, that thing over here, all of us here. Yeah. Those who did IT, yeah, they'll be fortunate. The world will be there for them on yeah. Okay. But if though, though uh, it's, it's fine with me, especially with the kids in the class, no more these chalkboards. Make this easier for teachers. For the learners or for the students, you see, uh, it's, it's good to you can someone somehow we need to, to improve in lives. You can't live in, like in the past now. Okay, okay, no, very powerful words, very powerful words. And then finally, do you have anything you'd like to add or say to the documentary itself? Maybe something I didn't think about, but you now just want to say to the people who could be watching this documentary. Uh, what can I say to you guys? Let, let, let's not be afraid of technology. I know some of us, we are, what do you call it, uh, PPT, born before technology. Yeah. <laughs> I can understand that one. But some, some we need to it will improve ourselves. We must go with the, with the times. Guys. Technology is there for us. So let's not be, not, not, not be afraid of it. And I will encourage the, the coming young ones that please learn no, no more about technology. Technology is the one that, that will help you in the future. You are going to use technology most of the times. It's not like in the past, you see. So let's prepare ourselves for the for the technology, the, the new one that is coming, and then try to learn it. Especially our, our, our behavior, if they can, if we can then to introduce it at, at the schools, people, the children will know more about technology in the schools. Like stop studying those, so to say, to use the so to say, to use the to use the words to use this. Mm. Some other subjects are useless to be to to, to, to me. See now, technology is the one that is very important. Yeah. That's what I can you. Okay, okay. Hi. So we've just spent a couple of hours at the library, stalking about, looking for prey. And we were lucky enough to find very nice people. One individual who was a student and willing to give us a great interview, Ashley, and a library official, Mpo, who was more than happy to help us answer some questions. After collecting a good amount of information at the local library from our interviews, I thought it best to next find a school I could approach and query, so as to see how our education department was progressing in the face of this oncoming wave of digital disruption and industrial revolution. Seeing as it seems that our future lies in education and us learning to adapt with the times. So here we are at LG Holela Secondary School. And we're about to go in and see if we can't get ourselves an interview from a teacher, hopefully. Um, wish us luck. Yes. Good morning, Khaled Sang. How are you today? 
Um, I'd like to thank you once again for being part of the interview. Uh, like I mentioned, I'm shooting a documentary about the fourth industrial revolution, okay. computer literacy and internet access in South Africa. So um, regarding that, okay, first I'd like to ask, um, what do you do here? I mean, we're, we're at LG Holele Secondary School. Yes. And you're a staff member here. Yes, I am. So, uh, what staff are you? Um, I deal with the, I'm actually one of the ICT members. Mm -hmm. Deal with the computers, smart boards, the tablets. Okay, um, and exactly what do you do with the tablets or in dealing with them? What do you mean exactly? Okay, um... If you'd care to explain, yeah. Okay, when the tablets arrive, or when they are delivered, we have to issue them out to the learners and make sure that the, each and every learner gets his or her tablet. And make sure that the tablet is working, mm. doesn't have any problems. Computers, the, like anything that is IT related, that's me. Okay, do you fix the computers yourself or do you handle the management of the computers? Um, I actually deal with the system support side. Mm. Yes. Okay, okay. Alright, so going with the interview, have you ever heard of the fourth industrial revolution before? Um, yes, actually I have. I've heard of it. Okay, and what does it mean to you? Or what comes to mind when you hear fourth industrial? Well, um, I think it's a, it's a change in our lives, if I can put it that way. It's a, the way that things are now, you know. Okay, changing and developing with technology. Yes. Okay, so seeing as we're in a high school now, a secondary school, mm -hmm. well, how do you think technology has affected or affects the way students are learning these days, or the way we do education? Um, to be honest, um, technology has like it has improved so much that learners are even using um, the gadgets to learn the tablets, if I may say. Mm -hmm. The tablets that they are using, they come with their. Um, subject-related books. Oh, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they can actually read from the tablets, they can learn from the smart bots. Even the smart bots, they come with the textbooks, the teacher guides, everything. So I think it has a, a good and a bad influence. Okay. And oh, Sorry, I'd just like to ask these tablets. Does the school provide the tablets to the students? Yes, they do. Um, is this to everyone who registers in the first year or? Um, the tablets are actually for every learner. Every learner gets the tablet from grade 8 until the grade 12. So are you saying that <coughs> right now when they're in class, they, they go to class, they pull out the tablets and they study or they learn with their tablets? Yeah, you can, you can say that. Look under your chair, you're getting a tablet. You're getting a tablet and you're getting a tablet. Every South African student is getting a tablet. In his State of the Nation address this year, February 2019, President Cyril Mopoza announced that government plans to provide every South African school child with a tablet device containing digital workbooks and textbooks. Aiming to address some long-standing issues in the country's education system, such as equal access to quality education and educational material, the government plans to roll out these tablets in a three-phase implementation, with the first phase targeting multi-grade, multi-phase farm and selected rural schools from 2020 to 21. The second phase targeting quintile 1 to quintile 3 schools from 2022 to 23. And the third phase targeting quintile 4 and quintile 5 schools from 2024 to 25, with quintile 1 schools being the poorest to quintile 5 being the least poor.
A bold feat, but one that is going to have a hard time making a positive impact in an education system faced with horrendous challenges such as inadequate facilities and crime. An audit conducted in the previous year alone found that nearly 4,000 schools did not have appropriate sanitation facilities, a problem that has in the past led to the spread of disease as well as other terrible tragedies in these schools. And if internal instability wasn't bad enough on its own, criminal activity has also impeded and deterred the progress of education in the country. Where over 15,000 tablets have gone missing, reportedly stolen, as government-sponsored schools become the victim of crime, with thieves repeatedly getting away with valuable devices and disrupting the education system. The battle for quality education in SA continues to endure. It's a good thing that they have tablets to like study with them. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. No, I think I think it's great that they're introducing te or using technology here to study. Uh, in your opinion, what do you think about the computer literacy rates in South Africa? How literate do you think people are with computers? Um, honestly speaking, uh, as you can take a look at the IT industry, we don't have we don't have like enough IT technicians. So. People are not indulging themselves into these IT things, I, um, computers, like, I don't see many people having interest in the IT section, actually. Looking at the past, you can see that things are, like, different. Mm -hmm. Things have changed drastically, so... Okay, I, I guess you could say students now using tablets to study in class is things changing. Yes, it is. If I may ask, um, when did they start, when did the school start using tablets and smartphones? Um, I think, I think it was 2015. 2015. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure, but I think it's 2015. Okay, okay. So now, I'm curious, yourself, what do you usually use the internet for on a daily basis? Um, the internet, mm. <laughs> obvious, number one, download music. Okay. If it's not music, games, news, yeah. Okay, so just sort of um, usual things, uh, like yeah. entertainment and... and, and. And on, an, and on an average day, how much of the day would you say you spend using the internet? Just a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Okay, okay. Um, I'm guessing the kids, the students use the internet as part of the education here. Do they ever Google things in class, sort of? Or, 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 how, um, or, or how much do you know about how they use their tablets for studying? Well... To be honest, I, I, I'm actually, I, I do not go to class that much, mm. so I wouldn't tell you if they use the internet or not, but um, the, 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 the tablets, mm. they mainly use it for studying, as they come with the subject related textbooks. Okay, okay, yes. oh, okay. So they use the tablets for studying. They read their books in there, and they also come with the teacher guides, teacher manuals. Okay, all of them loaded in the tablets. Yes. And the school has um has a lot of exposure in IT. Um, if you had to say, how, what percentage of students do IT or are interested in IT in the school? As I've mentioned earlier on, mm. that um people are like not interested in. Uh, IT. Mm. I would say 30%. 30% of the students, okay. Okay, okay. And then, um, out of personal curiosity, and this is just me here, I, I just want to know, do you, do you do any programming or are you more on the hardware side of PCs? Um, programming is not my thing. Okay. It's actually, no, it's not my thing. 
Okay, so to do, you're more on the hardware side yes. of PCs. Okay so, okay, so now I'd like to ask questions that have to do with sort of people's use of digital technology and how we're adapting to it so far, right? So personally, have you ever bought or sold anything online, whether it was a service or a product? No. Is there any specific reason for this? Do you prefer buying offline or you just don't like the idea of the buying online? I'm just not an online person. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit skeptical of having to um, buy things online. Mm. Okay, you're a bit skeptical. Yes. Well, if, say, maybe there was something that you wanted to buy, right? Mm. Like, say it was a, a phone, a tablet, or some, oh, some piece of clothing. Would you re Google it, look for it online, and then go offline? Or how, what would you do to buy it? Um, that's actually what I do. I look for it. I, um, I search on the internet. Mm -hmm. Look for something that I might be interested in. And then I go to the shop. Oh, okay. And get it. Oh. You can't buy it online. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, then, have you ever taken a course online? No, I haven't. Uh, is, what, and is there a reason for this? Do you not enjoy studying in front of a laptop, so to speak? Or do you prefer that there's a classroom and you're in person with the teacher? Or? Yes, that's what I actually prefer. It's much easier that way. Mm. Mm. Well, would you say, would you ever in the future take an, a course online? Maybe out of interest or if, say, your job asked you to? <laughs> okay, let's say, let's say you had the option to. Would you take a course online? Uh, I would. Mm. I would. Okay, okay, okay. Then, have you ever been a victim of cybercrime in any way or form? No. Okay, do you think, why do you think that is? Do you think it, it's because of the way that you conduct yourself online? Do you feel that you're careful and safe? Or do you think it's just a matter of luck? It's not a matter of luck. Mm -hmm. It's how I personally, you know, conduct myself. Okay. It's, okay. A, it's a personal thing. Okay, okay, okay. So then, how much do you think the world has changed because of computers? Um, to be honest, everything is actually based on computers. Having to do things through the internet, online. Okay, so in what way do you think computers have changed the world? And what do you think it's going to look like? going into the future? Um, to be honest, computers have like changed our lives as we tend to um, rely on computers mm. more often. We tend to actually do things online and um, by looking at that, job opportunities are no, are no longer there. People no longer get employed because of these online things, computer th things. Um, and looking at the future, mm. there, there won't be any employment available. There won't be any um, job opportunities available. Why? Because the, the, the computer things, the online things, having to do things online, having to like... Um, buy things online maybe and yeah okay I, I guess you could say that uh, things are going to change like maybe we won't have as much shops like instead of going to pick and pay you'll just go online and pick and pay with deliver okay 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 alright then I believe I'm pretty happy with the questions I've asked you today in, in our interview um, but is there anything you'd like to say maybe any last thoughts or Something you'd like to share? Well, it's an advice actually. Mm. Um, I'd like to advise people, students actually, to 
and we'll take a look at the IT industry to think about it ne? Mm -hmm. and see if maybe they can indulge themselves into it. Okay, 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 all right, brilliant advice. And finally, to get a good idea of how industry was being affected in South Africa, I thought I would look for someone in industry and talk to a working professional about how digital technology was affecting the way we work and live. Yes, good morning, Tapelo. How are you today? I'm good. I'm all right, thanks. Uh, I'd like to thank you once again for being part of our documentary about the fourth industrial revolution and computer literacy in South Africa. So I'd like to explain for the people watching at home, um, today we are at uh, Flawless Hedu. Yes. yes. And you are here, you are the... I'm part of the management for Flawless Hedu. Okay, okay, so I guess you... Uh, play a large role in the maintenance and running of this shop. Yes. Okay, may I actually take a video so to show people? Okay, so Flawless Hairdo is a company, well, uh, uh, a saloon. Um, how long has it been running for now? Mm, it has a year now. A year now. Yes. Uh, have you been part of it this whole year now? Yes. All right, all right. Okay, so then moving along to our talk about the fourth industrial revolution, I have a couple of questions I'd like to ask you today to find out what you think about the fourth industrial revolution and your attitudes about the change that's coming. So first question, have you heard of the fourth industrial revolution before? Yes. Okay, so what, how do you feel about the industrial revolution? Uh, well, at first I started, well, I was like, uh, I was for it, but now not anymore. And why would you say you are no longer for it? It's because um, it's destroying other people's jobs. Okay, okay. Uh, would you care to explain or say why you feel it's destroying other people's jobs? Yeah, yeah for the revolution, for the industrial revolution comes with uh, artificial intelligence, robots, and other technological stuff of which more people will be out, will be out of jobs. Take for instance, uh, McDonald's has implemented a self-service program and uh, those machines, uh, they, they've limited the number of till. That means uh, at least seven people from each McDonald's are gone. So we have less and less employed people in South Africa. Less and less people employed in South Africa does not sound like a very motivating statement for a country that has already been dealing with high levels of unemployment. And unfortunately, Tapero's outlook of South Africans losing currently existing jobs to computers and robots is not just an overly dramatic statement, but a factual point, as there are some McDonald's franchises in South Africa that have begun utilizing self-service kiosks, Standard Bank, has begun closing down its branches and robots are becoming more commonplace and less than just a matter of fiction. Boldly introducing innovation after innovation, it seems banks are taking the lead in adopting to the fourth industrial revolution in South Africa, as FNB added a feature that allows customers to open a bank account with a selfie on their phone. APSA ushered in a chat banking feature allowing customers to conduct microtransactions from chat platforms like WhatsApp and Facebook, and now, Innovation has taken yet another leap forward, but could it possibly have been one step too far as Standard Bank, as of June 2019, closed down more than a hundred of its branches across the country, saying that the move was aimed at aligning its business and retail banking platforms with the modern way its users bank. The workplace is certainly beginning to see a change in operations as our technology continues to grow and advance to the point at which we can have computers and machines automate a number of complex tasks. But, as much as this may present a range of advantageous opportunities, like fast production, it also brings with it a number of problems, most worrying of these being job loss due to automation. They don't get tired, they don't form work unions, and if you program them just right, they won't complain much. 
Robots these days range from simple machines designed to carry out a set of tasks to advanced near-human-like machines with artificial intelligence capable of doing almost anything humans can do, including jobs that require human interaction, such as customer service or even newscasting. According to the 2018 World Robotics Report, published every year by the International Federation of Robotics, investments in industrial robots keep increasing, with global industrial robot sales having more than doubled from 2013 to 2017, and the outlook for 2018 in the next three years estimates an increase of 14% per year on average. However, it is predicted that all these new technologies will also give rise to new jobs as more traditional ones get automated. Jobs like data analysts and other IT fields may become more popular and available, but only time will tell. Okay, well, then regarding computers coming over to take out, to take out jobs, what do you think about the computer literacy of people in South Africa in general? Do you think we are we are able to respond to computers now. Okay, fine. Uh, when I look at things, how, how we live in South Africa and other countries, Africa is the slowest technological growing continent so thus far. Since uh, all the countries are moving faster than we are, and we are the most slowest uh, developing countries there is then we, we, we don't have much of technology or skill sets in Africa but then what we have is manual labor mm. we're good at building things with our own hands rather than using a robots and stuff. Even our ed education system is not very important for the revolution. Mm. Because we're not, uh, we're not teaching kids uh, simple things like programming and other stuff. See? Okay, and what do you think we can do? What do you think should be done in South Africa to help us better prepare for the coming fourth industrial? Well, I'm not bored the fourth industrial revolution, but it's coming in, in a way that we can't stop it. But the only thing we can do is empower our people with education and knowledge so that they could be prepared and ready for it. Like the next, the, the next wave of fourth industrial revolution will be uh, artificial intelligence. Mm. Obviously, we'll be having more robots working instead of uh, people doing that, 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 that the, 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 the workload. Mm. So people will be moving, uh, people will be out of jobs, then we will have more, uh, more production. Oh, mm. And then if we have more production and people are out of jobs, who will buy those things? Because mm, they won't be making any money. Yeah, they mm. won't be making any, any money. Mm. Well, what do you think the chances are that as people lose jobs, there'll be other jobs to come along? Or do you think there's anything that we can do in response to people losing jobs to, com to robots? Could we maybe create new jobs or make some kind of laws, maybe? From that point, we can, I think we can't do anything. Mm. One person will pick. 50 jobs by creating those robots. Mm, mm. Remember, one robot can pick up to seven jobs, and one person can create up to uh, maybe 10, 10 robots. Mm. And each robot take, is taking seven jobs. How many jobs are we losing? Oh, yeah, like the company. Hundreds, if not millions. Exactly. Mm. The, the company that, uh, that hires a person to create the robot will be making money. People will be working, but those skill sets are rare. Mm. Okay, well, since look, looking at that, we're in a saloon right now. I'd like to ask, 
Do you think robots will take over saloons? Do you think people will now start doing their hairs by robots? Or? Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Do you think there'd be some jobs that'd be safer than others? Or? Okay, fine. Uh, well, we are at uh, the location of your job, it, it puts you at the risk. So, when you are at I believe that it's technologically advanced. That means you are more likely to lose your job. Mm. But then when you are at a place like this, I think I still got a few years before the <laughs> robots start catching people's hair here. But at some point there will be a resistance. Mm. Mm. Some people will resist the robots at all costs. And some people will be for them. And most likely it will, it will depend on uh, uh, people's pockets, how rich you are. Oh, okay. If you are rich, you want somebody to work for you. Mm. And instead of somebody, you can have a robot. If you are poor, you want to do something for yourself. And in this case, you want to afford a robot to do something for you. Okay, so you're saying the fourth industrial revolution could actually create a bigger gap between the rich and the poor instead of helping everyone to now become more economical and get jobs. It's already creating a bigger gap. Mm, or with people who have already started losing their jobs to robots, like in the case of McDonald's. Uh, in case of McDonald's, in case of uh, South African banks. Mm. Most banks are creating branches because they are, they, are, they, are, they are no longer unprofitable since the apps are taking over. It's like it's easier to bank with the private with the app than going inside the bank and bank. Mm. And the charges the charges inside the bank went higher, like they are higher than they used to be. Because we have a self servicing uh, ATMs. Mm -hmm. So if you can deposit on an empty ATM, what 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 are you doing inside a bank? Oh yeah, yeah, dealing with people standing in lines. Exactly. The mm -hmm. only thing that uh, the 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 remaining with the 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 only thing that the ATM is not doing right now is printing cards. <laughs> mm. If that you could open an account on an ATM, <laughs> who would work? <laughs> <laughs> who, uh, who would actually uh, have a job? Uh, and I'm sure it's this close to happening. Just yeah, it's close. Okay, okay, so then speaking of how technology is coming and there's going to be big changes and everything, what about yourself? How has the internet changed the way you do business? So how does it affect the way you do business? Okay, fine. Uh, in terms of internet, we're using social media as a marketing platform so we, have, uh, we can reach more and more people. Uh, we can reach people from afar. I have, I even have a friend from Georgia, Atlanta, who cuts hair. Wow. Okay. Mm. Okay. okay. And we, we exchange pictures. Okay, so you're already forming ties internationally with other people. Okay. Okay. And social media is helping to network, even on a professional basis, not just a social one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I guess. Would you describe yourself as an early adopter to technology? Mm. Of course, yes. Okay, so would you say then that there are good uses for technology in that besides the fact that it may come and take over our jobs, it still has some significance? There actually is good uses for technologies. Uh, and for some jobs, yes, I agree. Technology has to be implemented to minimize the risk of human injuries. Yeah. But for some job, I don't think technology uh, is needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, like maybe just cutting people's hair because you wouldn't want a machine now to make a mistake and or oh. <laughs> I don't think if we, you are running a pro program, mm. a program has, has strings that limits and control it from making mistakes. Mm. But uh, uh, then the computer will always be on 
on point unless we have viruses. Mm. If it's infected, then it's sick. Oh yeah. That's the big mistakes. So I guess now, from now on, we may have to worry more about computers getting viruses and ending us than people getting viruses and just get going to the doctor yeah, and just yeah. going to the doctor okay okay so then um what do you usually use the internet for yourself if i may ask uh I use my the internet for social media maybe research news mm. and other stuff other stuff Okay, so I guess you can just say it's very casual use of the internet to just help you with things that you're already doing during the day. Yes. Okay, and how often or how much on an average day would you say you use the internet? On average, on an average day, I'm using the internet for like about maybe two hours a day. Mm, two hours a day. So you don't, you're not too connected to the internet or like there all the time. In most cases, I'm busy. Mm. Too busy to even touch my phone. Okay, so you can say that um, your work and just being busy is what sometimes keeps you from using the internet more often. Yes. Okay. Uh, then, looking at your experiences with the fourth industrial revolution, technology evolving and such and such, I'd like to ask you just a couple of questions. Um, have you ever bought or sold anything online, service or product? Yeah, I bought, uh, bought, bought most things online, I sold little things. Um, then if I may ask, the, the places where you bought the things, was it like where you buy from other people, sort of like OLX and Gumtree, or was it more like a company that you bought from, like Take A Lot and Pick and Pay? Or? Uh, bought from all, uh, other people. Mm. Even on Facebook or OLX and I was and Gumtree. And with uh with other shoppings I went like for Wish. Uh, -huh. uh and take a lot. Yeah. Okay, okay, so you I guess you could you could describe yourself as very used to online retail and adopting to these trends that are coming up now of just buying online. Yes. Okay, and so you're never afraid that maybe you might have a bad experience buying online, like you buy something and then it comes back maybe broken, fake, or just won't come at all. Yeah, well, uh, everybody's afraid of losing at some point, you know? Mm -hmm. But then there's, there are other websites like Hello Peter, then you can check on Hello Peter if the website is okay, you can buy from it. And then you listen to other people, there are comments, there are other things that guide you from buying from this retail shop online. But then uh, people are just afraid in jail. And no. some people don't even check the description of a thing. They just buy after buying the wrong thing mm. and they, 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 they sell the shop as bad. Mm. We recently had uh, people saying that we wish sell small goods. Mm. And of which you can you can buy a key holder for fifteen bucks. Okay, okay. But you didn't check the description. Why do you once you click on the description they tell you this is a key holder. They give you the size of the of the boots. Oh, mm. okay, so if people have to be careful then when they shop online. Yeah, they should read on the description. Sometimes you see an actual jacket, you see a beautiful jacket. Mm -hmm. When it comes it's it's a doll's jacket. Oh, <laughs> but you didn't read the description. Uh, once you go back, you start reading the description, you say, ah, and I bought it for 300 bucks. Mm, it's thinking it was going to be... <laughs> yeah, you're thinking you were going to wear it. Okay, okay. Okay, and then have you ever taken a course online? Uh, not exactly a course online, but I've downloaded some tutorials to learn some other stuff. Mm. Okay, okay, so, so, so you've used the internet to study and learn things. You just haven't formally taken a course online. Would you say this is because of your busy work schedule and that you don't quite get the time to always be... No, it's because I'm busy. I don't really have time to, to, to study online like all the time. 
when I say, well, if I could take a course, I would study like uh, maybe once or twice a week mm. when I get that free time. But on the weekends, we're always busy. And then there's a short a little time you have to yourself. Okay, I'd imagine people come a lot during the weekend to get their hair done. Yeah. And, and okay, okay. All right, then have you ever been a victim of cybercrime in any way or form? Cybercrime. I'd say I, I have been, but it was a one-time thing. Uh, they kind of scanned my card mm. and started getting deductions from my page. It was like I was on with this cover, mm. of which I didn't sign for. Oh. Mm. Okay, okay. And when I go to the bank to find out that they do that cover, they say that the company that, that you bring your money doesn't really exist on our platform. Ah, okay. So it's just that other, other people put in my money. But they stopped, they stopped it. Okay, so you're able to cancel the transactions, yeah. continuing. Do you think the police should start getting involved in cybercrime, in things like cybercrime? And they know. Mm. Fraud is cybercrime. Right? Okay, I suppose fraud is cybercrime, but what if like your Facebook account was hacked into or your emails Depending were... Depending on the length of the crime. Mm. Oh, okay. Depending on the length of the crime. I think uh, anything could be traced using an IP address. Mm. I think uh, using this technology, someone is aware that someone is really taking your account. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, so like hackers Hence, or Google. I saw on Twitter they closed up uh, a lot of fake celebrity accounts. Mm. Because they are aware that you're using them. Oh, okay, okay, so you're saying Twitter is now also trying to act on people committing fraud online and just keeping people in order? Yeah, because there, were, there was a crisis of, uh, of celebrities uh, about that thing, but otherwise... Okay, then if I may ask you a final question, I think I've gotten quite a lot of feedback from you and insight so far. Thank you very much. But if I can ask you a final question, how do you see computers changing the world? Computers are taking over. Most companies will fall because of these computers. Especially those companies that depend on human nature to work. Let me ask you a question. What if we have a blackout? What if we have a blackout? Oh, that's yeah. a very good question. Especially given South Africa and ESCOM. No, we do. I'm not talking about electricity. I'm talking about like a, something like a big, a big pulse. Oh, like boom, and then all of a sudden just our computers and technology. Yeah, like fry all every microchip. I guess that could be a big problem. Yeah. I, I guess that could be a big problem. Because if we're running on technology and just everything is technology, we'd probably just be unable to do things for while yes. the blackout happens. If the blackout comes, we'll be in the stone age. Mm. Imagine living without a cell phone. <laughs> that way. Mm. That's the first thing to die. Yeah, no internet, no, no cell internet, phones. No, no cell phone, no WhatsApp. No call, mm. no yeah. electricity. Oh, we have to go back to writing letters. Maybe the only thing that would be working is the pen, but I'm not, I think they're using electricity to pump the water. So uh, you might not get any water. Okay, <laughs> okay, you know that would be a pro that would be a problem definitely. If our systems now like sewage, um, everything, everything. So electricity. I guess we'd have to have some kind of a backup plan, at least. There's no backup for technology. <laughs> if it goes, it goes. <laughs> <laughs> Technologies are backup. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, okay, well then thank you very much, Tapelo. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add? Any final words or questions maybe even? Uh, I guess the only way to survive the social revolutionary industry is to be prepared for it. Study what's in line with technology and and that's it. Electronics technology, how to build robots, drones, electric cars, and how to program them. Mm. That's what. <coughs> that's what's coming, and it's coming with a storm. Mm, with a storm. Okay, so now we just have to learn. It's I guess now to survive is to learn. Mm, the survival skills. All right. All right. And thank you very much. So four interviews and a ton of research later. And what have I found out about our attitude towards the fourth industrial revolution and our progress into it? Well, for one, I can see that there seems to be a bit of a pessimism that hangs in the air over South Africans feeling ill-equipped and less than ready for a total industrial revolution. As we take a look at the country's endeavor at progressing with the evolving trends and technologies, it also becomes quite apparent that not only does our government and people recognize the significance of digital technology, we can't all the time live in olden days. We also have to adapt. The only thing we can do is empower our people with education and knowledge. in our day and era, but are also taking action to respond to it. Although unfortunately, some of the country's long-standing problems, such as crime, underdeveloped industries, and unemployment. Yeah, I know all men with this is upon us, but it has so many scams these days, yeah. you can't trust. I'm trying to the technological growing so far. Are either standing as a hindrance, or threaten to get worse. And finally, there's a noticeable amount of hesitation toward adopting some of the new trends and technologies due to mistrust, uncertainty, and lack of familiarity. Uh, but this thing of both internet sometimes is, mm. I make it easier for other people to take your money out of your account. You see, I don't trust people that much. Conclusions? A rapid and massive change in industry is on its way. One that has already begun transforming education and industry. What it's going to look like exactly, I can't quite say. But what can be said without a doubt is this. Okay, 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 all right.
like brilliant advice. The years are moving way by, we all need to learn anything. Uh, what can I say to you guys? Uh, let's not be afraid of technology. I know some of us, we are, what do you call it, uh, PBT, born before technology. Yeah. <laughs> Send that one. But some some we need to improve it through ourselves. We must go with them in good the times. The world is there for us. So let's not be, not, not, not be afraid of it. And I want to encourage the, the coming young ones that please learn no more about technology.